And here is the playing hall for Millionaire Chess. One million dollars guaranteed total prize money. First time ever in the history of chess. It's a nice playing hall. It's a seven round tournament. I was lucky enough to participate in it. You're going to see some of my games here, all seven of them. And at the end of the seventh, after the seventh game, I will do a little, I call critique of the tournament. Both good things and things I think that need some improvement. But anyway, it was a great playing hall. It was a great site in a fabulous and exciting Las Vegas. Had a great time. Hope you enjoy the games. Here's some pictures of me from Millionaire Chess. Played in Las Vegas, Nevada with my cowboy hat there. There was a lady there taking a picture. She was nice enough to post them online for me. Uh, it was a really great tournament. There's another picture. That's the young man on the left. His mother is the one who's taking the pictures here. And uh, there's another picture. And that's me at Millionaire Chess 2014. It's a great tournament. Hi folks, John Cordisco here. This is a game that I played around four from Millionaire Chess Open 2014. They had a million dollars worth of guaranteed prize money in total. It, it was a big tournament. It was really, really amazing stuff. It was in Las Vegas. I'm from upstate New York in the Northeast United States. So I basically flew across the country and this is a game I played in round four. Uh, white is Yosef, I'm sure I'll butcher his last name, Debid, Debidi, Debidi, and I'm black. Let's get to it. It's going to be my usual Scandinavian knight, bishop. Now, I didn't take right away. I developed the bishop first to hit the queen. He come back with a bishop. I took, he took, and I played queen takes. Now, my Fritz computer that's off screen has got me at a small advantage already on a move five. So that's a good continuation, I think, for the Scandinavian. He went knight f3. I went knight c6. Just get your pieces developed. I'm thinking about castling on the queen side. I'm not sure yet. We'll have to see. Uh, this is going to take going to kick a few moves to get this bishop out. I'm going to move this pawn and then the bishop and then castle. So we'll see how it goes. He goes knight to c3, hits the queen. Now, the computer's got me going queen to f5, and I happen to agree. That's probably the correct move. Or h5, one of the two. h5, I think, is a little better. That's a secure place for the queen, and it's facing his king side. I decided just to come back to d7. It blew the little advantage I had, but it's basically an even game. He castles, and I gave this a long thought. And the computer agrees with me, which is good. Queen to f5 or castle long or h6 are the three choices for the computer because that's a really nasty right here that's nasty that knight going there <clears throat> excuse me I decided to castle along anyway he went a4 and this really surprised me now this was an older gentleman look Middle Eastern I think it doesn't matter but and that's why I said okay this is an older guy this is what I call street chess and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just guys that play, and they play really bizarre off moves. He's pushing a pawn towards my castle position, and he's also going to get his rook out via the A3 square. So, okay, we got a an older guy that likes to play street chess. All right, let's get at it. And I decided to take away one of his attacking pieces of that side of the board. He took, and I took, and then went rook A3. Now, oddly enough... Looking on, let the computer run a little bit here off screen. A3, rook to E1, and D3 are all about the same. And he decided to go rook to A3. Now, I don't know why I did this. I mean, so far in three rounds, I've only got a half a point. So my confidence is a little shaken. So I'm going to go knight to d4, and he decides to trade. Get as many pieces off as I can. Now, with these strike calls street players, they don't like to trade queens at all. Because you can make those really big tactical moves with the queen, and, and without it, you're, you, know, you have to coordinate your pieces, and that's a little tougher. He just goes a5. Just disrupt my queen, uh, queen side castle position a little bit. And I did what the computer suggested would make sense. I want a6. And I've got plenty of time here. I mean, this move, 
when this pond moves the discovery here so he's gonna have to move the rock I'm really <clears throat> I'm really okay and he did he went rook to d3 now several moves here for the queen that, that's the problem we're gonna put the queen queen to b4 is probably a better move but I didn't want to go b4 as the computer suggests because I didn't want to start get him giving him temples now he might sacrifice his pawn and then come here I just didn't want all that nonsense so on rook c5 and we can't push the pawn he plays takes king takes and he checks me here now the computer has suggested queen f3 might have been a better choice and then after I take the pawn he takes that pawn and that's a lot hairier I didn't want to go in for that so after queen to d3 Peter gives me a question mark. I should go king to c8 or e8. c8 is probably better. I want the third choice of the computer and the worst choice is queen to d6. Horrible. He goes there hitting both pawns now here and here and I'm going oh man. What to do what to do. So I decided to go queen to c6. Now this is all pretty secure. Let him take the pawn. Let him attack that pawn. But all my pieces are, are good. Everything's guarding each other. This is all secure here. He can't take anything. He can't threaten anything. There's no checks. And I get to take the pawn here. Now queen takes f7 of course is, is the move. But he decides to go rook to e1. And immediately his advantage basically dwindles. We're pretty even now. So, okay. All right, dodge that bullet. Of course, I go e6. Two reasons. One, to stop this pawn from being taken. And I'm letting my bishop out, finally. His bishop is yet to be developed on c1. <clears throat> he goes rook to e3. He wants to do the rook left, come right after my king position. I should have played bishop d7 just to develop the bishop, or maybe even to d6. I decided to move the king over. That was the third choice in the computer. And they were all close in score. So now he's going to go after the f pawn. Pretty much bishop to e7. I really didn't want to get into that complication. I just played f6. Now I'm thinking to myself at this point listen, you got a half a point in three games. You draw this game and you have black. I mean, you're okay. That was my thinking. Rook d3 just to go after it again. Queen of d5 was more accurate according to the computer, but I decided to push the pawn. Now he goes rook to c3 hitting my queen. Queen e4 was probably a better move. Queen e4 does a lot of things. One, it threatens mate. But I decided to just go back to e8. That way the rook doesn't harass my queen anymore. I was kind of getting tired of that. But if I had got queen to b5, queen to f7, queen to d7, queen to c4, I just didn't like that scenario very much. But after queen to e8, he decides to go d3. Now he's going to try to develop his bishop finally. It's a pretty even game. His, his rook's right in the action. My rook's kind of stuck, but it's not the end of the world. Bishop to d6, just get the bishop developed to guard my pawn here and my pawn here. He plays bishop d3. And I play the computer move, which I'm kind of proud of. I don't do that much. Queen to b5. Now I'm thinking to myself, where's that queen going to go? Goes to e6 check. Big deal. From there, there's nothing. And this is a street player. And he won't trade his queens. So that queen's in a good spot there. He decides to check me. I probably should have played queen, or excuse me, king to b8. But we'll see if he's going to trade the queens again. He'll go back to c4. Now, the computer has me going f5, which is probably a good idea. That bishop is really strong guarding the e5 pawn. I got a little spooked. 
and I played over. I didn't want this pen, this rookin' queen battery coming down, so I moved him over. He played rook to b3, and I moved back. I'm thinking, okay, you want to go back and forth? We'll see how it goes. He goes queen e4. Now he's hitting the pawn here twice. So the only really move, it doesn't really harm anything, is c6. And that's fine. This rook can't get over to pin the bishop. Everything's okay. I'm all right. He decides to go c4. He's going to push. And he's calling for f5 again. And that's probably a good idea. Forcing his queen back. If I go h5 instead, I figured, oh, you know what? Let's throw a little street player right back at him. Let's start storming his castle king and see if what he does. And he does waste a tempo by going h3. Now I go f5. And I'm feeling pretty good at this point. I got a tiny advantage on the computer, but I think my pieces are a lot more coordinated than his. He moves the queen back. And now I go f4, pushing the bishop back. But he decides to put the bishop there instead. Now let's take a look at this position now. I think my king's okay. I can always bring the bishop back to here if I really have to. Or put him here. He moves the bishop back. I can go back and forth, probably trade the bishops. I'm okay. And I go g5. Here comes the pawn storm. I'm feeling pretty good right now. I've got a nice pawn storm coming down. His bishop on b6 is really isn't doing much. It looks like it's really going after my king, but it's really not. So I'm feeling okay. He decides to go right after my pawns immediately. Now the computer says e takes d4 is the correct move. I'm not sure about that, to be honest with you. I play g4. Figure, let's go, let's go. Now, instead of d4, the computer suggests for him queen, and then g4, c5, bishop b8 as a good continuation. After d4, I go g4, he makes a huge error at this point. Computer, H takes, gives him a huge question mark. H takes G4. Now, the computer liked the lock. Queen E4. Queen takes. as being a good continuation for him. After H takes, H takes. Queen E4, finally. Now, I finally got a distinct advantage here. Distinct advantage. That bishop is doing really good duty for me. He's really, really big support for those pawns. And according to the computer, I've got it almost a three-pawn advantage. That's huge. That's almost a full piece. I'm doing really well. I don't think I'm doing that well when I was playing it, but I'm doing okay. He's reacting to me for a change. His rook is basically worthless there. My pawns are coming down on his king position. I'm okay. E takes, bishop takes, and this is probably what I should have done but didn't. Computer calls for queen, rook to e8. I play queen h7, and that was my doom. That was my doom. I had not seen this. I did not see queen here check. Excuse me, queen e6 check. I didn't see that. I didn't see queen e6 check. That was the move I missed, and that cost me the game. Now, right now, it shows 0, 0.00 on the computer. If I had played rook to e8, and it says black wins, queen to b1, queen to f7, and I'm doing extremely well. Extremely well. I didn't see it. Now we're on move 36, and I was getting a little bit short on time, and I missed 
Rook to e8. That was the winning move. I went queen to h7. He checked. King over. Bishop takes. Now I've got a draw right here. Back and forth. To b1. King up. Queen comes back. King goes back. I've got a perpetual. And I'm so aggravated at this point. I said, let's go for it. And I blew it. Queen to b1. King. I thought I could drive his king out in the open. I thought maybe with me coming back and picking up the bishop, with this bishop coming down, I should be able to get at least perpetual. I miscalculated, and I played g3, and the game is over for me. It's almost a seven-point advantage for white at this point. Back to h7, and that would have been the perpetual. He took. I took. King to h3, queen checks, king to g4, queen to d1 check, and rook comes over. And that's the end. I'm down a full rook with absolutely no compensation. There are no more checks. He can block them all. I can't come here with a queen and check because of the bishop. And so there's game four. I had a winning move and missed it. So right now I have a half a point for four games. I have three games left after this. I'm pretty discouraged, so you're going to have to wait and see how I do the rest of the tournament. I do rebound pretty good, just to give you a heads up. But anyway, that's the missed opportunity from round four in Millionaire Chess 2014 from Las Vegas, Nevada. Look for the other three games posted here soon. And I want you all to remember, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Look at that. That's beautiful. It's got to be one of the most proud moments of my life, I guarantee you.